Hi everyone, my name's Emma, I'm a third year medical student studying in Sydney, Australia, and today I wanted to talk about my study flow now that I'm actually in clinical placements. So I would be lying if I said that there wasn't a steep learning curve transitioning from preclinical, especially 2020 preclinical, into clinical years. Um, but I do think I found a bit of a flow, something that's kind of working, and I wanted to share this with my other clinical students out there, or maybe my preclinical students following, who can look forward to something and kind of plan ahead um, or adjust how they're studying. And hopefully you find something in this video that is helpful, um, and comment below if you have any tips. Now, my flow is kind of divided into sort of three phases, the oh my god, I don't know anything, the I really need to remember this, and then the okay, time to actually study, review, or learn this phase, um, and it will all kind of make sense. As always, chapters will be listed below so you can kind of skip through if you'd like, but I do suggest watching it start to finish because I think it'll make more sense that way. Starting first when you're actually on placement. Now, when I'm on placement, I always have a notebook. Always. <laughs> it does depend on the ward or where you're placed, um, but I do have a bit of a system. So for clinical days when I'm on sort of more wards, I'll take something that's a bit bigger um, because you can, you can walk around with them. And then on OT days, I still suggest you have something. So a little pocket notebook that can just pop right into your scrubs that you can write in when you're not scrubbed in or between cases when you're not scrubbed in um, can become really, really handy. Now, what you do in the day really does depend on the ward, the team you're with, um, what you're able to do, what sort of the care level of the patients are, um, or if you're in OT, for example. So things can be very variable, but a notebook is really, really helpful because it lets you write down your tasks, write down notes of patients' histories, and all of those things, as well as starting to create some of your lists that you're going to need to do my method. So the things that I write down in my notebook outside of what I would do just to sort of function in the day is any drug name that I immediately didn't recognize or that I hesitated on, any pathophysiology that I saw that day, as well as any sort of explanations or teachings that profs gave you about it. Um, whether I knew it or not, I still kind of note that down and I definitely really circle it or highlight it if it was something I had no idea about. Any quotes from doctors, um, things that they use to explain procedures to patients or to other me, other students, um, anything that I heard my peers say when they were taking a history that I thought was actually a really good way to lead into that question, things like that, as well as sort of any general reflections um, that I had during the day. So it's kind of a bit of a journal too, um, things I saw about life in the hospital, how we care for patients, um, or little wow moments, or like, ooh, moments. There haven't been many of those. Um, but things that I want to remember and reflect upon later, especially since my school, we do weekly reflections. So I pretty much write down everything. <laughs> my brain feels a bit like a sieve, and my notebook is the way that I stop things from slipping all the way through. You can write down as little or as much as you want, but even just scribbling down heart failure 60 year old man will remind me that I spoke to a man or reviewed the bloods of a man with heart failure, that kind of thing. Now, some days on the wards are longer than others. Some days you come home and you have tons of energy or you get an early mark at least, um, and other days, most days, you don't. But there's one thing that I always make sure to do when I get home, and that is to transcribe everything from my notebook that day onto a master document. The master document I have split up into the weeks of placement, so each new page is a week, um, and I've set it in Word to have fancy headings and things like that. And then I separate the day, so the day that the placement actually happened, as well as an end of week review section. And then I start filing everything into this document. So any patients or cases that I saw, I will put under that specific date, so Monday of that week, um, and I will leave 
a couple little reminder words or a little sentence about their care um, without anything identifiable, of course. But just so that I remember those patients because it does help you to connect a real person to a pathology or to a treatment um, to help you remember it later. Continuing on, any sort of general reflections I had about my skills, the feedback I got, what I watched on the wards, quotes that I liked, those also just kind of go under the day, so they're kind of connected in my little memory bank um, of the patients I saw and what was said to them or what I thought of their care all together. Any of the physiology that I saw or that I felt I needed to review, as well as any of those meds that I didn't recognize and that I had written down, those all go into a section at the end of the week. I have two separate lists, one for physiology slash pathophys and the other for meds I need to review and I just file those in as the week goes on and I always highlight them once they've been added in so that I know I haven't touched them yet. And then week by week or day by day, I repeat this so you'll have a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday um, placement list with a accumulating and growing list of pathophys and meds that I need to review. I think it's so important to do this right away because there are details of the day that you probably didn't write down that you'll remember as you're typing things out. Um, or it's also a lot easier to read your own chicken scratch if you had just written it that day because I could go back into my notebook weeks back and have no idea what I was talking about. But everything in my typed up document makes complete sense. Now, some days you might have a bit more energy, so I personally like to prioritize the med section um, because the likelihood is I will see that med again the next day, especially if I'm on the same ward, and pharmacology requires a lot of repetition. So I will often check them again, see if under the more relaxed environment of home and not the pressure of the ward, do I remember the medication or can I infer what it is? If I can't, I look it up and I review it and I might make an Anki card or find an old Anki card and make sure I bring that back out of retirement. If it's a day that I have a lot of energy or got an early mark, I might start working against that pathophysiology list as well. Reviewing it, doing your sort of normal study. But I do have to be honest, not many of those days have happened. And that leads me into phase three, which is actually when you get to consolidate and review and learn. And those are sort of the days off, so the days that I don't have wards or maybe I only have a class in the afternoon and I can actually take the time to dig into that list. The nice thing about making this ongoing list is that on those study days, you have a clear direction. An arrow with both direction and magnitude. Which I know can be kind of hard to find when you're in clinical placements. It can be hard to remember what do I need to study, what's important to get out of this, and what have I been missing or what do I need to learn. I have it all already written down. So some days I might just go straight to the last thing or the first thing in the document that's still highlighted and start there. Others, I might kind of go back through the last few weeks and see, is there something that kept coming up? Did I keep on missing like the myotomes of the leg or the dermatomes of the arm? I just finished a neuro placement. And do I need to focus on those because they kept coming up every week? I know they're a basic skill and I'm missing out on them. And there's always the option to, to go back into your course outline and see the learning outcomes that they want you to have at the end of the year and cross-reference that with the cases you saw this week or last week and what's highlighted on your list and kind of start with the things that are on those same lists. But regardless of where you start or what you do, you have that study list to work through. And, and those days look like however... I need them or want them to look like depending on the content that I'm studying. No matter where I start on the list, it's going to depend. So it might be reading a textbook, rereading my old lecture notes, um, finding those honky cards that I've buried or hidden and reviewing them again, adding them into the new pile, um, talking it through with a friend, any sort of study method that I would normally use, I use them on these bigger study days to get through that highlighted list. But it really helps relieve some of that anxiety of I'm going to miss the learning opportunities or I'm going to lose the learning because it's always written down and I know that eventually, hopefully, by the end of the year or the placement, I will have gotten through those things um, and I can leave that list just unhighlighted um, for the sake of remembering, no, you've been putting in the work and you have been studying, which can be really motivating. So that is my new study flow. I hope it kind of made sense. Essentially, write everything down on the wards, add that to a master list as soon as you get home, and then when you actually have the time and the energy, 
study from that list. Um, it seems pretty simple, but it took me a little while to kind of figure this out. So I wanted to share it with all of you. Comment below your study methods, where you are in your study journey, and any tips that you have, because I'm always up to trying something new. Give this video a like because it really helps out my channel and it also lets me know that you want to see more advice or that you just like me. <laughs> and make sure you to subscribe if you're not um, because again, that also helps my channel and you'll be able to watch more videos with my advice about my journey to or my journey through med school as well as some vlogs to sort of peek behind the scenes as what life is like for a med student in Australia. And with that, I will see you in the next one. Bye.